Uh, hello, dear students. Uh, uh, in the last class, uh, we have completed our discussion on uh, engineering materials and uh, we discussed about uh, smart materials. Uh, today, uh, in the same module, that is module 4, uh, we'll move on to a new section um, which is even more interesting and uh, you know something uh, which we see in our daily lives, that is uh, power transmission. And uh, in power transmission, we'll be discussing about uh, gears and gear drives. Now, uh, generally, it so happens that uh, uh, the, the place where the power is produced, it is not used uh, there itself. So you need to transmit it uh, to some other place uh, where it can be utilized uh, efficiently. Uh, even, for example, in case of uh, power plants, uh, when we talk about uh, thermal power plant or hydro power plant, uh, you know, which produce a large amount of uh, electricity in, in terms of megawatts, uh, you know that electricity is never used uh, there itself. You know it has to it has to be transmitted over the transmission lines to various places where it is used. So here also, you know, we have a very similar concept where uh, the place of uh, power production is different from where uh, the power is used. Now, how do we uh, transmit motion and power uh, from one place to another? There are various ways in which uh, you know we can transmit motion and power. Uh, we can have belt drives, we can have gear drives, uh, chain drives, rope drives. Then we have transmission shafts, couplings, etc. Now, uh, you know what type of a drive we are going to use uh, will uh, depend on various parameters. However, the most uh, popular uh, uh, power transmission elements are uh, you know gears and gear drives. So uh, they are they are mainly used to transmit. Uh, motion and power when the center, center distance, that is the distance between the driver shaft and the driven shaft, we is called as the center distance. If the center distance is small, then uh, you know, we can use gear drives. If the center distance is large, then uh, you, know, you can still use gear drives, but the size of the gears will be uh, huge. And uh, since normally gears are made up of metals, the overall weight of the gear itself becomes uh, so large that you know, the, the shaft itself on which they are going to be mounted will tend to bend. So we have to go in for a different mode of uh, transmission in such cases where the center distance is large. That is the distance between the driver shaft and the driven shaft is uh, more gears are used when the center distance is less and uh, gears are uh, positive drives we call them as positive drives because uh, there is no slip you know once two gears mesh with each other and they start operating there is uh, no question of uh, any uh, slippage okay and uh, they also provide a constant velocity ratio you know what is the velocity ratio and uh, you know these things we will uh, discuss we will be discussing it uh, later now, uh, we need to understand the definition of a gear. What is a gear? Gear is uh, basically a toothed wheel uh, where the teeth are cut on the periphery of a cylinder or they can be cut on the periphery of a cone or sometimes uh, even elliptical discs. Then uh, two machine gears uh, uh, need to have uh, same tooth profile. You know, they have to be similar in their tooth profile. Uh, that is the tooth thickness, the depth of the teeth, uh, you know, all these have to be same. Only then they can mesh properly. So uh, once these gears are manufactured, they are mounted on the shafts uh, or the axles and they are key to them. Uh, there is a very specific uh, method uh, which is called as keying of uh, gears to the shafts. So they are mounted uh, on the shafts and they are uh, tightly fitted on these rotating shafts. So that uh, once the shaft starts rotating, the gear also uh, starts rotating uh, along with it without any uh, slipping between the shaft and the gear. And uh, between the gears also there is no slipping. Then the shaft uh, uh, to which power is uh, transmitted is called as the driven shaft and the shaft which contains the power is called as the driver shaft. So always uh, uh, power is transmitted from the driver shaft to the driven shaft. Then the size of the gears which are mounted on these shafts, uh, you know, it, they can be different. Uh, the diameters can be different. And uh, once the diameters are different, uh, the uh, consequence of that is the speed will uh, keep changing. That means uh, if we mount a larger uh, gear on the driver shaft and a smaller gear on the driven shaft, then later on you will understand that the driven shaft will rotate at a higher speed as compared to the driver shaft. So, uh, uh, if a driver shaft is mounted with a smaller diameter gear uh, and meshes with a larger diameter gear, then uh, the opposite will happen that, the, 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 that means the driven shaft will rotate at a lower speed. Now, uh, uh, suppose you know we have a, 
uh, two or three shafts and uh, they need to be connected or two shafts are to be connected where the center distance is slightly more wherein we can't use uh, or it is not feasible to use either belt drive or chain drive and so on we will be using gears only however uh, in power transmission the direction of rotation of the shaft is also equally important so uh, we need to understand uh, how the combination of gears have to be used in order to maintain or obtain the required uh, direction of motion for example if we use uh, even number of gears that is you know 2 4 6 8 and so on then the driver shaft and the driven shaft uh, will uh, rotate in the opposite direction and if we use odd number of gears then the driver shaft uh, and the driven shaft will rotate in the same direction for example here you can see if i say that a is the driver shaft and or the driver gear and b is the driven gear then once with they mesh with each other if a is rotating in the clockwise direction automatically b will rotate in the anti clockwise direction similarly in this case you know we have uh, odd number of gears uh, in this case so if a is rotating uh, in the clockwise direction and if c is the driven shaft or the driven gear intermediate we have one more gear which is b now if a is rotating in the clockwise direction b will rotate in the anti clockwise direction and since b is meshing with c c will again rotate in the clockwise direction so a and c will rotate in the same direction if odd number of gears are used and if even number of gears are used then they will rotate in the opposite direction similarly you know for example here uh, in in both the cases we see that on each shaft there is only one gear which is mounted so here we have gear a then gear b here we have a b and c now if each shaft contains only one gear and if we make an arrangement then it is called as a simple gear train sometimes it so happens uh, that you know uh, for power reduction and for getting better uh, you know output uh, it may so happen that we may mount two gears on the same shaft and the arrangement will be, will be slightly different so if more than one gear is mounted on a single shaft you know in a, in a gear train okay so this assembly is called as a gear train so in a gear train if two or more uh, gears are mounted on a single shaft then we call that, call it as a compound gear train now here you can see the arrangement each uh, shaft is containing uh, in this case there is only one gear okay so we have a b c and a is mes meshing with uh, uh, b and b is meshing with c that's it so each shaft is containing only uh, one gear now uh, this kind of a gear train is called as a simple gear train now just look at the second figure that is uh, you know this figure we have uh, two gears mounted on the central shaft that is here so a is meshing with b but c is meshing with d okay so that is b is not meshing with d so b and c are mounted on the same shaft so in in this case uh, the calculation of the velocity ratio is slightly different and this arrangement is uh, you know more complex as compared to a simple gear train hence this is called as a this gear arrangement is called as a you know compound gear train then uh, you know we are going to uh, classify the gears uh, uh you know these gears of course uh, can be made up of uh, metals mainly in in uh, uh, machinery or automobile industry or any such applications the gears are made up of uh, metals only but uh, there are uh, instances where gears are also made up of uh, non metals like polymers plastics and in some cases wood and so on and uh, gears are classified um, uh, based on their application but before that uh, the same uh, sketches whatever we have seen you know we can see it uh, schematically you know these are hand drawn you can see the schematic representation so this is a simple gear train here you can see that there are four gears uh, that is 1 2 3 and 4 and each shaft you know these are the shafts okay so each shaft uh, contains only one gear so this is gear number 1 this is gear number 2 this is gear number 3 and this is gear number 4 okay so this is a simple gear train arrangement uh, so similarly we have a compound gear train here you can see that uh, uh, if i say this as 1 1 is meshing with 2 and 2 uh, and 3 are you know mounted on the same shaft so 3 is meshing with 4 so here we have 1 then this will be 2 this is going to be 3 and this is going to be 4 so 1 is meshing with 2 2 and 3 are mounted on the same shaft that is this shaft and uh, gear number 3 will mesh with gear number 4 now then we'll now we'll see the classification of uh, 
you know gears themselves we have different uh, types of gears which are available for example we have spur gears you know spur gears are used to connect uh, shafts who, whose axes are parallel to each other then we have helical gears helical gears uh, also serve the same purpose normally they also are used to connect two shafts which are parallel to each other but uh, when we study about each of them uh, you will understand why helical gears are slightly better than spur gears and you can of course uh, uh, connect uh, non parallel shafts also using helical gears then we have bevel gears which are used to connect shafts whose axes are intersecting so that means uh, they, you know they, they can either be perpendicular there are two shafts which are perpendicular to each other let's say you know i have a driver shaft like this and the driven shaft like this i want to transmit motion and power from here to here so this is rotating okay so how do i transmit motion and power from this shaft to this shaft so in such uh, cases we are going to use bevel gears there are special types of gears which are also called as uh, elliptical gears which are used to connect uh, parallel shafts but we want a variable motion okay so um, the the kind of motion itself is going to change then we have spiral gears which are used for non parallel and uh, non intersecting shaft axis such type of shafts are called as skewed shafts then uh, we have another type of an arrangement which is called as a worm and worm wheel arrangement Uh, they are mainly used for uh, non parallel and uh, non coplanar uh, shafts and uh, finally we have a rack and pinion you know uh, this is mean you know this kind of an arrangement is mainly used to convert uh, rotary motion into linear motion now if you remember uh, when we were discussing about a lathe the kind of motion which is given to the carriage there is a hand wheel on the carriage so we give a rotary motion but the motion of carriage is linear so this uh, is achieved by the rack and pinion arrangement which is fitted inside this uh, lathe okay so these gears uh, you know you can see them here the, these are the various types of gears which we were discussing uh, uh, we will be discussing them in detail also in the next class so this is a spur gear then we have a helical gear then uh, uh, this is a double helical gear which is also called as a herring bone gear then spiral gears uh, these are special type of bevel gears which are called as mitter gears then these are straight uh, bevel gear then internal gears so uh, that means the meshing is done internally then we have the uh, worm gear worm and worm wheel arrangement and finally the rack and pinion arrangement so these are the different types of uh, gears so more in detail about uh, these gears uh, we are going to study in the next class okay so thank you very much